Um, welcome to the Town of Deerfield uh, Board of Health Select Board meeting for June 29th, 2021. The time is uh, 6 p.m. The location is the main meeting room, municipal offices at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with the governor's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy of the public, the meeting hearing will not uh, will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast, other, uh, unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. For purposes of in-person attendance, the Town of Deerfield will host the meeting in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices with remote participation details noted below, which is a dial-in number of 312-626-6799. There's also a toll-free number of 833-548-0276. The meeting ID is 911-604-1580 uh, with a passcode, should you need it, of 570012. Um, if you go to the Town of Deerfield website, down in the bottom right, you'll see our calendar with all the upcoming meetings. You can click on the select board meeting and click on the URL link uh, to this Zoom meeting and participate by Zoom. So meeting attendees should mute their phones or mute their Zoom unless asking questions or commenting. All attendees should wait to speak until other participants are finished. So we'll call the meeting to order. Thank you, David. Uh don't have any standard hearings here in the Uh, select board report and announcement. Uh, do you have anything? We'll have a regular meeting tomorrow, so, um, any opening appointments? Okay, um, One thing that we're looking at is uh, reopening of the town hall. Um, yep. I know a number of people in town want to have the, the town hall open on Friday, uh, especially the clerk's office, but it causes a issue with the rest of the town hall, unless we can segregate that area where once people get into the town hall, they're going to go to all the other offices. The reason we are closing on Fridays originally was so that our staff could get try to get caught up on some of their work. Um, do you feel about this? Casey, um, I don't think. Um, Casey, I just wanted to double check the um, the reopening plan that I'm reading here is kind of, this was written a while ago, right? It wasn't like yesterday's. The beginning right. of it was written a while ago. What we That's do what is in the last section. Okay. So at this point, we're, we're staying, I mean, I think not everyone can hear David very clearly, especially in the audience. So the idea right now is that Fridays will still, I mean, this will still be a phased reopening and Fridays were still closed to the public, but still working. Is that right? I'm prepared to go either way. David had asked me to put together a reopening plan that allowed for a full reopening at this point. So that's what you're looking at. Um, it's up to the board whether they want to do that or not. I mean, it, it's it's up to you guys. I don't, I don't think it has any impact one way or the other at this point. Um, it's evolving situation. Uh, um, 
the Delta um, variant is uh, more rapidly transmitting in the country than the Alpha variant, which was the UK variant uh, originally. And um, just in the last 26, I mean, the last 10 days, 26% of the country now is um, has the Delta variant. So here in Massachusetts, because we have such a high vaccination rate, it's, we're around 10%. From according to the DPH today on our um, information meeting. Um, we're watching it. It's evolving. Uh, we just, you know, I, there are unvaccinated people in our communities and our children under 12 are unvaccinated. So I would just say, be very careful. Anecdotally, I'm, I have been text and emailed that people have had had uh, vaccine breakthrough with the new Delta mm -hmm. in the county. But the only thing I can say is if you're in an environment where you do not have filters, the doors aren't open, and you're in a closed environment where the aerosols, it's the aerosols, a build up, have an opportunity to build up, then I would wear a mask. And that's how you protect yourself. We will know more as time goes on, um, what we'll, we're going to do with the school in the fall. It doesn't look like we will have um, an, an approval, emergency approval for under 12. So we will have some guidance for the schools um, this fall. But you know, there's no reason to talk about it at this point because it's such an evolving, changing situation. So I've been in touch with Darius um, and we've worked really, really well through the entire pandemic so far. So I don't see that's gonna change. Uh, the school committee's been willing to meet on an emergency basis with us on a regular basis. So um, I don't, I will just keep everyone posted. Just be as safe as you can and um, just pay attention. We, we had no flu circulating. We normally have seven or 800 cases that are reportable in the town of Deerfield. We had one last year. And the reason why was because people were wearing masks, they were washing their hands and they were social distancing. So it is really important that we try to do that same thing again. We will have um, run our EDS uh, events in the fall. We will have flu shots available for the community and um, free flu shots and we hope that people will participate again. So we'll just keep you posted. I personally don't have any issue opening up on Friday. I don't, unless there's I don't any other reason why not to, but. I, I suggested that we're still way behind on a lot of our paperwork for the grants and everything. And if we still have, if we have the constant foot traffic in through those offices, we're gonna have trouble with that being, uh, whether it be Brenda, uh, Barb or Casey. So I just, if there was a way that we can segregate that area and just have the clerk's office open, I'm in favor of that. But I don't think there is a way to do that. Right. I don't think it's a way to segregate it either. I think we're either open or we're not. Yeah. And I think we can always come back and readdress it. And if we need to put more restrictions in place at a time, we can do that. Um, but I think, I think all the science leads us to opening yeah. as far as I'm concerned. So, so I, I'm having, a, I'm sorry, Dave, I'm having a really hard time hearing. Do you, you so you would like the town hall to be open. Is that correct? For five days? I would definitely like the clerk's office to be open, but if we could make by appointment only Brenda, Barbara, Casey, so they on Fridays? On Friday. No, no, just in general, right? You're talking no, about big appointments for Casey, Brenda, Casey, our town administrator, Brenda, our town accountant, and Barbara, our um, town, town clerk, treasurer, collector. Yeah, because I would agree. I would agree that we'd be open and do that. That way we can limit the number of people in the actual offices. So that makes sense all the time i mean i think it's best best <laughs> these best practice to let people uh call ahead of time and say hey i want to come and meet with you because these people are extremely busy with all kinds of things going on um but uh, i don't know if we do we want to limit people's access to these three people uh i mean i think we probably want to talk about that a little bit right 
Well, I mean, I understand on Fridays if you need a day to kind of like get your stuff in order. I was thinking because you have to go into the offices and you have to go into the office to find space. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm, I'm just thinking just Fridays. Those three, yeah, just appointment only. Right. Uh, the other four days, they just kind of open for them. Uh, as long as there's not anybody else in the office and the outer office is keeping through, that's fine. I feel like that makes sense to give people uh, a motion. Okay, so I'll make a motion to open um, the five days a week and then on Fridays, um, appointments only for town clerk, town administrator, and accountant. And if you can, public, make appointments any day of the week because it really helps them focus on what they're doing. Uh, there's a lot of work to do, a lot of different projects happening. So if everyone's kind of just stopping in all the time, you know, work backs up. So um, I'll, I'll second that motion. Okay. Um, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Carolyn Ness. Hi, David Wolf. Anything else on the select board? Board of Health? No. Well, uh, mosquitoes are being collected. The counts are a little bit lower than normal for uh, or what we've had in the past because it's been dry and there is no disease load at this point. That report came out today, right? Yeah. yeah. It's current as of today. Hey, uh, the next thing on the agenda is the discussion decision items. Uh, currently, we have a, a lot of emails, uh, letters on this topic. And the purpose of this meeting is for us to, uh, as a board, discuss the code of conduct and everything between the three of us. And the only way we can do that is with an open meeting. Casey? Can I just ask everyone to please um, mute. mute your mics if you're on remotely because we're having trouble hearing. If it would be okay, David, I would like to just um, change the um, uh, lineup of what we're gonna discuss. I would like to start with the code of conduct first. I, the only other thing I'm, I'm going to add is that we're not going to entertain any public comment on these subjects this evening. This is for a discussion between the three of us because we have, the only way we can discuss this is not have and not have a violation of open meeting law is to do this forum. Okay. <laughs> Okay, um, and I don't have a problem with the code of conduct first. Uh, if you look at our code of conduct, there's a couple things that um, I think need to be defined or amended. Um, in the first paragraph, it says the employee or appointee is expected to conduct himself or herself in a professional manner. And I think we need to define that maybe a little bit more clearly. Mm -hmm. um, something along the lines of being courteous and conscientious um, and business-like, or we need, this, we need to work on some language on that that, that defines professional a little bit more. Um, I think that allows too much interpretation or lack of interpretation. Then when we go down to policies on four, it says interaction with other members of boards, commissions, committees, employees, which lacks respect. I, I think, again, we need to define that. What do we mean by lack of respect um, as a, you know, the bar for dismissal? And then on the back side where we say, um, after it goes through the numbers, um, be aware that the town reserves the right to discipline, suspend, terminate, or remove an employee appointee for criminal felonious and other serious acts. I just think we should amend it by saying disrespectful or uncivil or um, intimidating behavior, something along that lines, as well as criminal felonious and other serious acts. I don't, I don't think it 
Um, I mean, I think we need to make that more clear. And then I, I'm on the fence about this expected comment, uh, expected con conduct is refrain from using raised voice, yelling, using demeaning or disrespectful language, using profanity or otherwise intimidating language. I'm not sure if we want to clarify that a little bit more, but it seemed like it was okay, but we do have seem to have some issues with that. Um, so th that was what my suggestions were of, of um, you know, what we need to do on what we have already. And then um, under the zoning board in the um, webinar, and again, under Mass General Laws, Section 12, they talk about any member of the zoning board can be removed for cause by the appointing authority upon written charges, complaints, and after a public hearing. And so I'm wondering if we could put in here, it just shouldn't be for the zoning board. It should, you know, we, we investigate complaints, but then there's no like follow-up action. So I'm I'm in my mind, I think we should have a public hearing. We should put in here that we have a public hearing to follow up the investigation um, because some some claims may be baseless. And I think a person should have the right to have a public hearing on about about that. But also there should be some closure for complaints. Um, so that was again just an, a thought. I, I agree. As soon as the people are involved, Carolyn, we can't have a public meeting to start with. We have to have an executive session, I believe. At their rights. Then after our executive session with the individual, we can go from there. I believe so, that's go ahead. The legal it's super hard to hear. I know, I can't really hear Dave, I'm sorry. So you're saying we, it says that we have the right to have a public hearing for the so, zoning board at least. Well, with it, with any, any, any board that serves, whether it's in a regulatory board or whatever that definition means, or any board has, they are special town employees. So they have to be treated with the same respect of a paid employee. So they all have the same process of affording them a, executive session with an attorney present. So you can't just have a public meeting to listen to charges against somebody just because somebody makes them. You have to always give them the ability to have an executive session. So it's not just like, hey, we've heard conduct about you. We're going to drag you up in front of the public and find out, you know, all this stuff without giving them the ability to have a executive session to discuss those things. So they ha they ha it's it's just law you have to be able to give them that ability to have that that first option i mean they can choose to have a public session if they want to lay that out there in the public but they also have to have the ability to have a um an executive session to do that by whatever appointing authority and then you get into all the different boards you know you have action but by the we, by the we adopt a policy and people are serving under that policy mm -hmm. the zoning board already by law is has a public hearing correct of that but you still need to give them that ability for a executive session because they're employees well, right but you still have to have a public hearing for a zoning board but what i'm saying is if we adopt this as part of our policy then we can say you, you when you sign when you go in to be sworn in with the town clerk then you can, um, you know that you're signing this code of conduct and it will allow you to. Uh, have Who's holding that public session? Us. No. The appointing board. The, we're only the appointing board to several boards. So the town moderator would have to come in and hold a public hearing on a finance committee. Well, you know, that's the, true. As, and as and as many as other as boards. Know. And then the, the appointing authority for a um, uh, Capital Improvement Planning Committee meeting would be the planning board appointee to that board. So you have all these different people uh, wondering who's running that meeting. So it, I think yeah, it needs to be thought through a little bit more of who the actual appointing authority is. Do they have the power to hold that, um, that meeting? I think it, 
it, it's it they sounds are, easy they, to say well if they are the appointing authority mm -hmm. then we are saying that they do have the authority to have a public hearing on someone's behavior I, yeah i just think we'd need an attorney's opinion on that for okay. sure that's fine i mean i would anticipate that carolyn yeah. on the uh, on the code of conduct that you sent us it was very clear in there it says as soon as the individual is named you have to do an executive session first yes well and, and i'm not saying skip the executive session but i'm saying that there should be some public closure on the complaints uh, not always not, not, always. Okay. not always Casey. So there's a definition, there's a difference in definition um, through the allowances of the open meeting law that differentiates what can be discussed in executive session and what's considered of a professional nature. So that has to be discerned first. And generally, you would treat that in a similar manner. And this is the recommendation of counsel. You would treat that in a similar manner for purposes of investigation by conducting, following a process that's similar to an HR process. Because you want to determine whether it's of a professional nature or is it of a personal nature that impacts the service provided by the board the person is appointed to that's those are the discerning qualities that have to get teased out before a decision can be made either about a public hearing or about whether it should go to executive session based on we lost half that but yeah so I, I think it's it's a little more complicated than just saying we're going to have a public you know discussion about uh, conduct. If you know again they're they're employees no matter if they're appointed or elected and they help or any other um, they just have it has to be done in a um, so we can get we can get counsel's opinion on how to word that best so that and then it really needs to be thought out about who winds up having this authority to hold public sessions on you know and 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 I, I i agree with you we need to clarify some of our um code of conduct but i you know every time somebody has a raised voice i you know we're going to gum up all the works i mean people get heated on their and passionate about their about their cause um obviously when it when it becomes vulgar language racist and, and you know there's a lot of things that are certainly defined in law on being discriminatory or bullying contacts um i just want to make sure what again i always say this the pendulum swings multiple ways and it goes far one direction and far back the other i just we want to find some centrist ground to some of this and and make sure that we're thinking about long-term impacts of the decisions we're making and we're not just trying to settle and work on one issue at a time this is long-term uh care we, we do expect our our board members to treat each other with respect and you know when we're dealing with very serious topics people get heated um and say things they probably shouldn't say all i'm saying is that we need to treat each other with respect and just because somebody raises their voice doesn't mean that they need to then have a disciplinary hearing and drag before the public and shamed and then you know i mean we have to we have to treat people with respect both ways so even when we're hearing the complaints we have to get to the bottom of that through a process of you know typically with, with any other town employee our town administrator first investigates that understands what the what the issues are maybe seeks outside counsel to do an investigation we gather the facts then we find out do we need a, an executive session offer that uh, if they choose not to and want to have that in public then we go ahead and do that um, but it, it's we just need to treat everybody fairly the same the way across the board i agree but we didn't follow through on the board uh board of uh zoning board of appeals because you're supposed to have a public hearing and, and I don't feel like it's fair just to have the zoning board by statutory requirements. They, they do have a public hearing, but I think all boards should have some kind of closure. 
and and that's why that. I think it should be a public hearing for every board, not just the zone. Uh, well, I think some stuff is is in state statute and state law, and other stuff is town bylaw. So I think we really have to discuss with our attorneys before we set out. You know this this thing where everybody under the sun is going to have to get dragged before the public to be you know, uh, answered for the raised voice, just really, I just want to make sure we're careful about what we're doing. Um, and that we're giving people, you know, we're, we're protecting their civil liberties, just as we expect them to, to protect everyone else's. So I just think it's a more complicated issue than just every board, everybody's going to have their the ability to drag anybody before the public and have a have a discussion about personnel issues so i do think it's important to have some teeth in this because i felt like we we really didn't have that um and maybe we should have helped handle that differently as the appointing pointing authority but um you know you learn as you go on this stuff and we try to we try to do better each day than we did the day before um but i think that addressing our code of conduct matching it a bit with the maya's recommendations makes sense to me i think we should you know again you can always improve and you can always listen so uh, i guess that's why there's a lot of room for improvement here and you know it's between the rules of yeah. conduct and a lot of other things that are happening within the town of Deerfield. And yeah. I'm a I'm a proponent that we should probably incorporate it into an employee handbook and have all the rules held out and to come up with this I think have like board, the personnel board, some general public. Uh, especially somebody in town is uh, SHRM certified, which is an HR certification, uh, to participate in this so we can come up with a format and present it in not in a hodgepodge way, but a very defined way. I'm, I'm, I'm really open to that. I would like to continue working with the personnel board on this. Mm -hmm. uh, they weren't able to get a meeting together um so quickly but uh i would like to have them help us with trying to fix this yeah i mean well we thought it was a great first step when we did it right and and you you learn as you go and i mean i think we we instituted this last year is that right not quite yes. last not, not quite a year ago so about a year ago um yeah, I guess it was a year ago, June 23rd. Um, so it was a result of our um, of, of that of going to the MMA conference mm -hmm. in January. Correct. So, yep. Um, we basically this was Lexington's right code of conduct that we cut and paste the majority from, um, and their presenter was you know really excellent. Yeah. But. As we saw, there really wasn't any real teeth, and that, and and if you look back at the statutory zoning board where they they say that you can have a public hearing, I, I but really, so just it just seems like we should have one for all the boards, not just the zoning board. Well, I'd like to find out if that's even legal. So that's what we would need to find out from from our attorneys whether. You can do this on every single board and, and get clear definition of who is the chair of those boards and who is overseeing those and what kind of access they have to council on all that stuff. It, it's quite a bit. So um, I think it's worth investigating, though. So I'm happy to do that. Um, I, I do also want to get clarity on you know be aware so in, in the zoning you have the right. I mean, really, you have a right for a public hearing, but really what you're looking for is is if you're looking for teeth is the ability to remove a member and that has to be really clear i think as you mentioned clear definitions on what constitutes that a raised voice is not it in my mind um but you know that's there's... why i wanted us to look at that because right i think that it's confusing if you're yeah if you're you need to be consistent in your definition of professional mm -hmm. and then you go your back expected conduct should match expected conduct should match and, you know, I, I just feel like there's not a clear definition. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, have gone through tons and tons of stuff on the internet and, you know, through this webinar. And, you know, it is, it is I think, vague. 
And I think we need to work on that mm -hmm. better language. And um, that's where I'm hoping that people will help mm -hmm. with those areas that we pointed out. You know, what, what defines lack of respect and what defines professional behavior? I mean, I think being courteous and, and polite is, is, should be everybody. Should it should be, be the norm, but it's right. not always the case. Right. And so, you know, how do we, how do we write it in a way that people know when people are being disrespectful and not civil? Right. We, we know, I know, after, you know, many, many years in government, we are much less civil than we were a few years ago. But before everything was on TV and taped, it was pretty wild. So I think, you know, there are some people like John Pachorek will know that it could get, it was pretty nasty. So, I've only been here a couple of years, so I, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> I think, it, you know, when people first were on TV, I think. There, yeah, like, it's a culture shock. Yeah, where people were exposed. more polite. And I think they're less polite now, but, you know. 20 or 30 years ago, I think people were not polite. Mm -hmm. Right, John? Wild, wild West. Yeah. yeah. So I think we need to find the happy medium on this. I agree. Well, I certainly think we can. I mean, did you see much difference between um, the code of conduct in, in Maya? It was a, I mean, from what I understood from this, this was the anti-discrimination and anti-harassment policy, right? Including sexual harassment, all of that, which we do include, right, in, in this. I think well, it's not. Um, it's not really explained in this versus, you know, this is like a, a one-page, two-page thing, but it really needs to be, I think, flushed out a little bit more and, and embody the you know, the anti-discrimination, anti-harassment policy with the example here. Yeah. Um, I would agree. So that it's a little, a little more. Oh. That might help. Right. Um, oh, here, here. I knew there was another section. So this is my code of conduct. Um, I think the other thing is um, there was a difference between shall investigate and may investigate. And I, I feel like if there's legitimate complaints, then we should investigate all the time. We shall investigate versus may investigate. Mm -hmm. I, I think it should not be just, you know, uh, whether you investigate or not, it's, it should be well, for, Yeah, discrimination and harassment, of yeah. course. Yeah, I mean, it makes... It, you, again, treat every person as right. if they're an employee, which right. they are. So, and and I think people should know up front that we will investigate every every complaint. You know, whether whether we think there's validity or not, we're going to investigate and not and not be. Oh, we're going to maybe or maybe not. But then we should uh, have clear definition of what levels of investigation that you may take. So, if somebody just says raises their voice, it's not going to have the same um, level of in, level of investigation as um, a sexual harassment lawsuit or a sexual harassment. Um, right. Well, right. I, I think what would do I mean, it really depends if it's a, if it's a sexual harassment <clears throat> um, complaint, mm -hmm. then I think we you would go to an outside investigator that I mean, right. And I think we should list that, though, as a definition of, you know, when we're working with personnel, like these are the items that we would or whatever committee we put together to, to work on this. But I think that um, you would have you would have each kind of each section of allegation kind of treated somewhat with, with a clear path of how you would how you would deal with those issues because they definitely are different in severity and require you know staff time and lawyers fees and all kinds of other things so you just gotta we just i just want to be clear about what we're setting out for ex expectations so that somebody has a clear path for if they feel aggrieved they they can take this clear path based on our policy and the other thing is, I, I just wanted to make sure that the, um, 
we were absolutely requiring everyone to sign off on the policy when mm -hmm. it was sworn in. Yeah. I, I think we did a vote to do we that. We did do that. Yeah. But for sure. Um, I'm just not sure if people were really aware of it. Okay. We'll make that crystal clear. Yeah. I think we need to be clear that if we're going to set up policies, they need to be mindful about including them in a personnel manual. Because as right. Trevor has mentioned, as I have mentioned, special municipal employees, we have an obligation as an employer to treat them with the same equity that we would treat a paid employee. And investigative process is really best dealt with in a manual. And that's something that personnel has been aware of for a while. But with some of the activity that's happened in the past year, we have not been able to focus more on that. So clearly we don't want to set up a situation where there's inequity between two different groups. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yep. yep, I just want to spell out for everyone for sure. Um, and I'm a firm believer that any complaint, no matter how minor, should be filed in writing to the town administrator. Mm -hmm. Yes. And yep. I would clearly say that if I have not received a complaint, I cannot investigate it. No, it makes sense. I mean, that would be the start of the process, and, and that would be spelled out in the policy so people knew, okay, this is what you do. This is where you go. Yeah. I just want to try and understand if there was a, a huge difference between these. There were some extra stuff, but I guess that I guess when we meet with personnel, we could right. call through I, both I would, of these to to I just do want that. To make sure that we're passing on all this information to personnel, Casey. Right? Well, I think we should participate in it as well. I, 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 I will pass. You know, right. Instead of just yeah, I know. I think I, well, it we makes sense to, that we, we all join them. To, it has to be enforceable, and so that's why I would like to work mm -hmm. so that and in a policy manual for right. employees. And then it's pub, then the people are aware that we're trying to come up with. Oh, oh no! <laughs> that we'll, we'll, people will be aware that we're trying to come up with a policy for everybody, and 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 they'll see why we ended up with a policy. Just kind of say again, because people are joining. If if you're joining the meeting, please just mute mute your um your Zoom if you can, and then unless you know speaking, Casey, I think you had your hand up. Thank you very much. I think it it is clear that we need to. If the board wants to work with the personnel board on this, this could be a longer range goal in terms right. of working through policies that can. And then be included in a manual because honestly, that's been lacking. It's lacking in the bylaws. I, yeah, I know Wendy wanted to work on that when she was here, and I know Diana picked up the ball a bit too on that. And um, it's, and and we've had you know overturning in personnel, and and I think we have a great board right now, and I think they're all excited to work on this. So I know that I've talked to a couple members, and they were happy. To well, I know the personnel uh, committee has a, a July 19th meeting. Um, can we set up something um, additional so that we can work on it over the summer, Casey? I would have to ask them. Okay. Because that's their next regular meeting. We would have to see what they in intend to have on the agenda. Right. Maybe a separate and meeting. Would it be something the board would want to join them for? They usually do a Monday yes. meeting. Right. I think maybe if we set a separate one, we could then dedicate just that meeting to that would be great. So their enforcement um, is in, in addition to any other remedies or enforcement options available under the law, uh, each board committee may vote to censure an elected member and the appointing uh, authority may decline to reappoint an individual who violates any provision of the code of conduct. Um, if any elected or appointed official is accused of violating the town's anti-harassment and anti-discrimination policy, the town administrator or manager shall refer the matter for investigation to the contact named in an anti 
harassment and anti-discrimination policy or is or a uh, disinterested outside firm, which we typically will do, um, or individual qualified to investigate the alleged conduct, the town administrator manager shall not be obliged to obtain any additional authority. This code shall be sufficient authority. Um, the firm or individual who, to whom the matter is referred shall um, promptly investigate the matter and report back findings of facts and recommendations to the town administrator manager. Town administrator manager shall uh, share the reported findings and recommendations with the elected officials board committee. The board committee shall then take such actions as authorized by law and as it's as deemed fit in response to the matter. It goes on a little bit. Go ahead, Casey. I would remind everyone that the select board as a hiring authority has the authority to implement specific policies. Personnel board may not have that same authority. They may only be in a record, they may only be recommendation um, related comments. Right. We need to investigate that. I've looked through the bylaw a couple times, but that may be something that needs clarification. So, film it's not on TVs. People are going to be mad. So, anybody that's on can please mute. Um, thank you. So, I think, yeah, because this, um, you know, our, our code of conduct doesn't have anything to do with enforcement, is not listed out, just as, you know, complying is required. But I think, you know, the, the verb I just wrote that is in there seems like it just to be spelled out for everybody to know what what the what the path is uh, for enforcement but, but if we did the public hearing not just for the zoning board uh, issues but because that's statutory but if we did that across the board for all our boards then there is closure for complaints um, I think, again, I, I'm not so sure that's legal, but we'll, we'll ask our attorneys. I think, you know, really this is saying you would turn it over first to the town administrator, town administrator will refer it to an investigative authority. They would gather that, bring that back to the board, and then um, take such action as required, you know, authorized by law, or it seems fit in response to the matter. I don't know at that point, do you then have to do a whole public you know, hearing on it. Planning board, apparently you can, you do a public hearing. Um, if for any, any, any member may be removed. If you're removing somebody, obviously there's after a public hearing, but if you're just having an allegation, you don't have a public hearing for that. So it, there's two I'm different saying, stories here. So I just want to make sure any member may be removed for cause by appointing authority upon written charges and after a public hearing, but that doesn't mean that every allegation has to be put forth for a public hearing. Only if you're going to remove that person, you cannot remove them until you have a until you have a right. public hearing. But if you are if there's a violation of our code of conduct, then that should be discussed as grounds for dismissal. Well, it depends on the severity of it, right? I mean, if somebody raised their voice or we find out, well, it's not really something you don't then have a public hearing for it or remove them. So I think that really- Well, then we need to come back and define- Yeah, exactly. Clearer so that we know that we have a basis for removal. Correct. That's that's the sticky part, right? And finding out where, where, where that, where, where the person's rights lie and where our appointing authority lies, somewhere in the middle is the law, and you need to make sure all of those are followed and the people are protected, their rights are protected, and we're, we have a code of conduct that you know, has enough teeth in it to make sure people are held accountable for you know, poor actions they take. So what, what would we want to do for next step? Is the next step is to get more defined definitions? Yes. 
And I think it, I personally, I think it would help to have, you know, either Kate or Lisa involved with this discussion with the planning board and, you know, uh, come up with. Personnel. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. What did I say? Planning board. I just always get the two P's mixed up um, with the personnel board. So, um, because I think it, a lot of what we want to do, we just want to make sure is seated in sound law and that we are, again, protecting people's rights that are serving and protecting the, those that are feeling aggrieved um, and making sure that the town is, um, you know, people are representing the town the way it should be with, with dignity and respect. <laughs> in the town's business. So I think um I got a close philosophy because they're they're making it sound like he did something talking. Wrong. Excuse me. Whoever's talking to me, please leave yourself. <clears throat> so um okay. So I think I I guess Casey will check for the personnel board and find a date that we could kind of get together and start I think the process of going through that and then maybe check with Kate and see if she's available. I don't know if Kate's the appropriate, she does a lot of our employment law. So maybe she would be a good person to have in on, on some of those discussions or whether we just have a first meeting and figure out what questions we want to put forward to her. I don't know what the best use of the time is, but. Um, well, I can, I, I, Casey, I can show you what I had highlighted as concerns for definitions and maybe they can do a better research for um, uh, more descriptive def definitions. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm actually in the middle of writing the email to the personnel board, copying Lisa and copying Kate, because okay. there may be an intersection with Lisa that, that's outside of regular employment because you're talking about different um, conduct and service by virtue of being on a board is a little bit different. Right. There are different boards and different Okay, so Powers, sure. so are we we're agreeing to ask them to define professional manner in the first paragraph, correct, Casey and Dave and Trevor? What, uh, show me again, so I understand. Professional um, conduct, a uh, professional manner in all aspects of work, formal and informal. Say that again, Carolyn. Um, in the it's in the first paragraph, Casey under policies, employee em, appointment. The employee appointee is expected to conduct himself herself in a professional manner, in all aspects of work, formal and informal. So what does what, so what, what are those we definitions, right? we need a more uh, more description descriptive in and something that's enforceable besides professional description and, and is that does that make sense to you too dave yes, it does. and how okay. it relates to the expected conduct right right and then if you go down to the um grounds for dismissal on on number four it says interaction with other members of boards commissions committees or employees which lacks respect I, I, I think we've had multiple complaints about this complete, you know, that lack of respect certainly would fit several of the complaints we've gotten over this past year. And I think we need to have that better defined and what is actionable for dismissal. Because lack of respect is just not defined enough in my mind. Is it does it raise it to the level of dismissal? It, we're saying it does. The following examples of conduct may result in disciplinary action on part of the town, up to including termination or removal. So what what is a lack of respect seems to be needs to be defined better in my mind. What at what level is removal? At what level is public hearing? We have a public hearing on it. I think that that's not clearly defined in my mind. Do you both agree with that? Yeah. I think that, again, we're looking for those definitions right. and what what the what yeah, the right. steps are. And then and then, like I said, I I feel like the 
public when the public makes a complaint and we investigate it there should be some kind of way to have closure so if nobody you know if we're disagreeing on whether we should have it triggers a public hearing or not other than the zoning board Maybe I mean, I, under, I understand, but we should have some way, and I would hope that our lawyers would come up some way for the public to have closure on their complaints. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have a response of and it's some like sort. a black hole. There's mm -hmm. no response to the public's complaints. So if, if we're saying that we're, you know, or at what level does it trigger the public hearing for all boards, not just the zoning board? There may be an authority question. That's why I'm including Lisa in this right. team. Yeah. Those are the those are the things that I had. And, and then I guess again, I'm on the fence on that last expected conduct because you you know how do you define yelling? I, I, you know you said it was passionate, being passionate, whatever. But, I think we need more clarification on yelling or using demeaning, disrespectful language. Okay. I think that means different things to different people. And refrain might be just like, well, you know, once in a while, don't. But right. I, I think it needs to be a little bit more specific about not, um, I mean, you know, raised voice versus using demeaning or disrespectful language or profanity. They're, they're kind of they are on two levels of the spectrum, and I think it, it's important. Um, I feel like if the other areas were addressed, then this is then this is not as unclear. Right. But it, this is what we ran into a problem: is that there wasn't enough definition when we had our issues over the past year. Okay. So that's, um, we could move on to um, employee on regulatory boards. Okay. Again, um, the seminar talked about best practice, not town employees on regulatory boards. However, the, it seems like the policies that um, I've seen from Kushnick, which is pretty vague, all the way to Northampton, which is specific to police officers, is, um, you know, there's a wide range of them. And I, if we were going to talk about police officers in general, I think I wouldn't want to do anything without John Bachor, our chief involved, because he's very on top of everything mm -hmm. and really a good person to bring in. Um, so I'm not sure what you want to do about this. Well, I'm very torn on this subject because I think, um, so again, you're, you're, uh, I'm worried about the rights of people as taxpayers and residents of this town to serve in capacities other than their day job, as we all serve as other than our day job. Um, and I, I also, um, I'm not, I'm not convinced that that's, uh, again, these unintended consequences of limiting people's expertise on boards. Um, you know, one, I couldn't find anywhere in the slides and information that you gave me that said best practices are not to have employees serve. I just that you know, was in the um, presentation part. I, I looked uh, at all of it, and if you if you click on to the presentation, it was towards the question and answers at the end. So it wasn't an actual. And no, it wasn't in the paper. Okay. This was so a I, question I, based on what I, has come up over. And I looked online, and I could not find any other examples of this being being the case. In, in other communities, and I, you know, of course, again, I, full t over full time job plus all the other really important things that we're dealing with. I didn't have as much time since we sat here last Wednesday to today to fully flush this out. So again, th this subject I think needs obviously to be separated completely from appointments tomorrow. 
has to be. And then it needs to be, again, flushed out in conjunction with the discussions that we're going to have um, with our code of conduct um, to really understand is this is this a, is this really a smart move? I'm not convinced it is. I'm not convinced it isn't. I really could be swayed both ways on that subject. And I want to hear both sides and listen to understand um, the negative impacts of doing it and, and I don't think she's having positive, positive impacts of doing that. Um, it's a very important issue. And, and we've got anybody joining the meeting, if you just please mute. Thank you. Um, I just think that needs to, we need to talk more about this. Obviously, it's um, struck a chord in the community. And, you know, I, I think some of the communications we've gotten have been misplaced a bit because um, there isn't really a full understanding of what the what the issues completely are. I mean, um, what we have to do as a board here versus just talking in public are, are complete two different things governed by law different ways. So um, it's not as easy as you know, it's not black and white trying to figure this out. It, it, there's, a, there's some gray areas where you need to figure out how to um, how to um, protect the liabilities of the town and still allow people to speak. And I think um, you're dealing with uh, employees and personnel and people's civil liberties on all sides of this. Um, and it, it, it's not easy. It's not a simple, easy thing to just say, oh, we'll just do this. Um, I really do think that it's important to listen and flush this out a little bit further and understand what the impacts are and, and what the negative impacts are of, of of um, barring any any person who re who's a resident in the town and pays taxes in this town and who also happens to work um and are, are we just limiting it to all employees and you know somebody from the wastewater treatment department could not be involved in a regulatory board or um I, i'm not well, so I, sure that's important uh, uh, you know i would prefer i would prefer to do it for all employees versus um just the police i mean well, I, of course I there's the no North, way you could North do that Hampton, so, you know, as civilian, as a, you know, police officer, as a, a, a employee, employee with public trust. And so to avoid the conflict, you know, you're not allowed to do that. But I don't, I, don't, I, I feel like it should be all employees, not, not just, you know, not single out police department. And, and if we are going to single out the police department, I certainly wouldn't want to make a policy without having um, working with our pl our police chief, who mm -hmm. is, you know, one of the best in the state and yeah. is on top of all this kind of stuff. So, I mean, I feel like having his input on this um, would be helpful anyway, because right. I think, you know, we can't avoid the fact that we are appointing another, you know, a police officer to one of our regulatory boards. So. Mm -hmm. I think um, either which we have done for years. I mean, we're talking. I know thirty um, years probably. Well, <laughs> so it's not um, like it's you know I, yesterday. I, no, that's absolutely correct. And, and have served for Roger, many many Roger, years. With Roger Sadowski was on. Ron Bahanowitz. I mean, there's there's yeah, a lot of there's people who have served this right. community very well in both capacities. Um, right. So this is kind of out of the blue. I agree. So I'm just saying that we need to look at it as you know holistically rather than just any one. I agree with department. that. But and I, I, I worry about limiting, one, limiting people's rights to serve their community. And, but also importantly, I think is, is not having, you know, cause this is a policy that will last for, for hopefully generations if it's done right. Um, and I, I feel like, I just worry about limiting when, when there's so few people willing to step up and serve. Uh, many times, um, you know, we have nobody. And it, and I, I read online, uh, I think it was a comment in Wisconsin about, you know, appointing people and what the best practices of, of that were. And, and you know, I, I, it's not different than this town is, is generally it's up to this board after we've put it out in a meeting multiple times and nobody shows up that we end up having to go control somebody to come please serve you know and it's only when there's a really hot topic that everybody comes out and says you know has an opinion on the subject but then months later everybody drifts away and then when you ask for somebody to serve uh, with multiple boards with multiple vacancies 
nobody steps up to serve. Um, so uh, I really am worried that when we might have somebody willing to serve, where there may be a specific expertise in this, whether, you know, maybe in zoning, I just take zoning for example, that we have a, you know, an engineer or something like that, or somebody that say we had a, you know, I, I'm not sure whatever past experience they worked as a separate job for a while, or maybe, maybe are employed for the town as a retirement, but may also want to serve with their skills on the community, um, say on a zoning board and, and bring a lifetime of experience in that we would say no, because you, you know, you, you work at the transfer station part time, or on the weekends, um, or maybe full time, you can't we can't benefit from your knowledge and I, I just worry about that those unintended consequences um so I, I think it needs to be talked about more and and, and listen to both sides and understand where the really cool big boy and uh, uh, like having people serve uh, that you know that want to step up and get this out last week part of their job to, so to get like it out Get it out. I think when we have public hearings and uh, Zoom, you're just going to have to bear with us. Well, Some people can't yeah, figure out where the mute button is. Make a mistake. Pat? Hey, Pat, can you find a way to mute that? Thank you. Um, okay. Um, not, not to sing a while, just, you know, <laughs> there's been multiple people tonight. So thank you for muting when you can. A couple things. Oh, does it, were they talking to me? One. Yep, yep, we're talking to you, Pat. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, uh, things. So I, Thank I you, Pat. Agree. Appreciate it. I agree with Trevor. Uh, two years ago, we had to beg, borrow, and steal people to fill almost all these vacancies that we're talking about. Uh, we don't right now. We have an overflow. But, you know, this will change and probably change in the near future. And the other thing is we've got to be careful of the consequences of it because... Technically, if you go by the letter of what some of this was, as a board of selectmen, we can't serve on the board of health. True. So right. you know, we got to make sure a lot of these things are clearly defined. So what I'm suggesting is that we have to do further investigation and uh, take up this action at a, uh, another time. Which might be a good thing, David. You know, if we could shed one more responsibility to another board of health, I wouldn't uh, wouldn't hesitate too much. So, but so you would uh, both agree to just continue talking about this with the personnel. I, I definitely agree. Yes. yes. Okay. Yep. I think it's important to do that. We've obviously heard from the public that they're concerned, and we need to flush this out further for sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other topics? Um, no, Casey, I think we've covered, I, Casey, you got that right. So I, I think we're covered everything that I was concerned about. Okay. Casey, I have can... notes. I will talk to council and I will see what we can do to forward more information. Okay. To, I did send the email to personnel board, just advising them that we would like to hold a meeting and I copied council. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do you have an uh, administrator's report for tonight? Are you going to wait till tomorrow? Save it to tomorrow or? I was going to wait till tomorrow. Okay. Uh, nothing under unanticipated. Our next meeting is actually tomorrow night at six o'clock. Then uh, July 1st, July 14th, 28th, August 11th, and 25th. Um, just a question on the, the uh, sewer work. Um, the piping project. I think we had voted that last meeting, and I think there's a contract to sign. Um, will we do that tomorrow night, or first can people just can resident uh, members come in and sign? Well, what I would ask you to do, there's actually two things. Justin, Justin just sent me an email. We need to discuss. This is in literally just sent me an email about an hour ago. Yep. So on the contract that was approved. I would ask the board to simply authorize you to sign that because you're the he you're here the most. Yeah. Um, and I would consider that an item unanticipated because honestly, the approval was one thing. We didn't have the contract documents. Right. What I asked Justin about is he has we have another contract that needs to be pushed along. And so he just sent me some information 
it may, I may want to consider this an item unanticipated tomorrow because literally I just found out about it. Sure. Okay. Thank you. I'll just keep it rolling for them. I'd love to get that going. Okay. All right. So, motion to adjourn. Thank everyone for coming out tonight and for your correspondence over the last couple weeks. I will second that and thank everyone again. It was really good to hear from so many people. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Dave Wolfram.